today's video, I'm going to talk about my, uh, my parents. Um, it's a subject that I haven't really touched that much on. Um, been thinking about them a lot lately, so I decided to, you know, make a video for them. Um, if you guys make it through the whole thing, give it a thumbs up. Give us a comment in the comment section. And subscribe if you haven't already. So, if you're new to our channel, you might not know the story of my parents. Um, I lost my dad back in 2003. Um, he died of lung cancer. Um, I still remember when he had found the lump, he showed me and my mom. And I didn't really, you know, think much about it at first. Um, then he went to the doctor and they, you know, confirmed that it was cancer. Um... Then they put the word terminal in front of it, you know, and that made it more real. You know, we knew that we were going to lose them. We just didn't know when. We didn't know how much time we had with them. Um, they got him set up with, you know, chemo and radiation. Um, they soon realized that the chemo wasn't really doing anything. So they stopped chemo and just started him on radiation. Um, I took him to radiation. He was having radiation, I believe, every day or every other day or something like that. Um, and I was taking him. And one night he told me, he said, I don't know how I'm going to get to my appointment tomorrow. I said, what do you mean? You know, I'm going to take you. And he had got to the point where he couldn't walk, you know, barely. He could barely stand, you know, so he didn't know how he was going to get to his appointment. Um... We ended up calling um, the hospice, and they got him um, set up with an ambulance that would come and get him in the morning and take him to his appointment. So that morning, um, the ambulance came to pick him up. Um, I decided to stay home that day. Um, I just going to clean the house, you know, have it really clean when came home. Um, and I had just got out of the bath, and... I got a phone call. I answered the phone because it was from Wake Forest Baptist Hospital, which is where he was at. And um, it was my mom telling me that I might need to call my uncle and my grandmother and get up there as soon as I could. And I knew something was wrong then because, you know, it was supposed to just be a regular, you know, radiation appointment. So I called my grandmother and my uncle and we headed up there. We got up there, and they told us that, um, now I might not say this right, because I forget, you know, it's been a lot of years. It's been, what, 17 years since he died, um, but I remember them saying that the cancer had ate a hole through the lining of his stomach, and all the stomach acids were, you know, and... They were going to do surgery, but they said that he wouldn't make it through the surgery. So they were just going to send him home, you know, because we had hospice. And, you know, he was really excited because he thought, it would, you know, we get to watch, you know, Georgia football, which was his favorite team, you know, play one more time. But one of the nurses was like, you know, you won't be alive by Thursday. And the look on his face, I mean, he was, he didn't realize, I guess. Um, and I still wish they had told him in a different way, or at least told him nicer. You know, there's a nice way to say things. Um, but we take him home. Um, they had him set up, you know, on morphine. Um, he had us bring the computer in there, and we had a video camera, and he was going to make a video for my mom and me, and he was going to make, you know, write letters to everybody. Needless to say, that never happened. And he slept most of the time. Um, we had people coming in and out of the house all week, you know, to see him, and um, some of his friends even sunk for him. Um... Yeah, and, and me and my mom and my uncle and my grandmother were there by his side the whole time. 
um, the morning he died, um, every, you know, every day hospice would come out and they would check on him and they would say, I'd be surprised if he'd make it through the night. Um, and every day he did. The night that he died, um, he started breathing kind of funny. And it scared me and my mom. So we called the hospice people and they, of course, came out, you know, to sit with us. And they told us that he was doing the uh, fish out of water breathing. So basically, if you don't know what that means, it means that usually a person only has minutes left. Um, they gave us a little booklet, you know, that kind of explained the dying process, you know, and what would happen or, you know, what was supposed to happen or what could happen because, you know, every person's different. But most of the things that they put in the book did happen. So when she said fish out of water, I knew that he was going to be gone soon. And I just remember talking to him and telling him how much I loved him and, you know, telling him it was okay to let go, you know, that we weren't going to, you know, to be mad at him, but he could let go. And it wasn't long after that that he took in one final breath and blew it out, and then it was over. And... I lost it, um, and then my mom went to their bedroom, and I happened to look out at the wrong time, and I saw them zipping up the body bag, and that, um, I'm sorry about that, <coughs> but yeah, um, they stayed with us until they came to got Anna, cut his body, and then we left and went to my grandfather's. Um, and, you know, he had his funeral, and I still miss him. I mean, it's been 17 years, but I still miss him. I miss him every day. Um, there's the tattoos I got for him. Now with my mom, um, she'd been, um, getting sick lately, and I remember, um, you know, I was uh, babysitting, so I would leave her, you know, for hours at a time. Um, I remember I left her one night, and I called, and she didn't answer. So, you know, I, I, I raced home, and, um, she was, when I got home, there was no lights on. Um, I yelled for her, and she answered me, you know, she was, she was still okay, but, uh, she was still sitting in the same place as she was when I had left her, like, six hours ago. And I asked her, you know, have you moved, or have you used the bathroom, or have you ate? And she told me no. <clears throat> and she was kind of out of it. You know, she didn't really... I was kind of worried, you know, but she didn't want to go nowhere. So, I let it go. Um, the next day, she was fine. Um, she loved going shopping on payday. You know, we would always go out to eat once. And we would do a little bit of shopping. And... She didn't really have a desire to go shopping. So I knew something was up. Um, but I had lost my car, so I didn't have a car. But we had someone that you know picked us up and was going to take us shopping. So we got to Walmart. We got out of the car, walked like two feet, and then she was out of breath and just didn't want to go inside. And like I said, I knew something was wrong. But she hadn't been outside in a while. You know, she hadn't been, like, out because I didn't have a car. And most of the time, it was just me going to work, coming home, and then that was pretty much it. So we just, you know, chalked it up to her, you know, that she hadn't been out in a while. And, you know, she was, you know, she wasn't used to it. You know, and we ordered food that night, and she was fine. 
then she started where she wasn't eating hardly anything. Um, my mother had never been a big person, but, you know, she, she would eat. Um, and I would have to, like, you know, force her to eat something, you know, because I didn't want her to, you know, get sicker. We thought she just had the flu. Um, because she was, was at the point where she was getting sick. Like, every night, she would get sick. And deep in my heart, I knew something was wrong. I knew that, that, that there was something wrong. But that was my last parent. I didn't want to admit that there was something wrong. I even remember telling her, you know, you need to go to the doctor. You know, you could be dying. And we just don't know it. You know, I don't even know why I said that. But she kind of laughed and she said, oh my God, Christy, I'm not dying. And um, a couple of days later, um, I woke up and she was, you know, already sitting in her chair. And she said she was having trouble breathing. And that she had called her doctor to see what they said do. And I was like, they're going to say go to the hospital. You know, I'll call somebody or I'll call an ambulance if I have to. So her doctor finally called her back and he told her to go to the hospital. Um, she didn't want me to call anybody and bug them, so I called 911, which is probably a good idea because I wasn't able to, you know, she wasn't able to walk that good, and, you know, they helped us, and, you know, I rode in the ambulance with them, and still, I really didn't think it was that serious, you know, I thought she just got a really bad case of the flu, or she had pneumonia, you know, in, in older people, you know, sometimes things like that, you know, affect them differently than they do us. You know, and basically the doctor told us that she had a weak heart, um, that she had, I think they thought she had pneumonia, you know, and that she would stay in the hospital for a couple of days and it would be fine. So they put her in a room, um, and I stayed a little bit, you know, I stayed until the hours were over and then I left. Um, came out the next day, you know, and she, she looked good. Um, to look at her, you wouldn't think she was sick. Um, she told me that, you know, that she had ate a little bit of her lunch, which I thought was amazing, you know, because she hadn't been eating. So her eating any amount of food was a victory in my book. Um, you know, they try to get her up to, you know, and walk in. She couldn't really walk that much. Um, her oxygen was a little bit low. But again, you know, I thought it was because she had pneumonia. Um, then one day I went to go see her. And I went to her room. And I walked in and there was a man in her bed. And I got kind of freaked out. Went to a nurse's station and they said that they had been trying to call me. Or they were just fixing to call me. They had to move her. Um, because she had, you know, got where she couldn't breathe. So they took me to her room. And she had all kinds of tubes running through her. And, you know, she wasn't awake. And um, I had to sign all kinds of papers. Um... So they could take her to a Baptist. Because they felt that Baptist would be the best place. And um, I remember taking her earrings out. And I gave her a kiss. And they took her to Winston. Now, when she went to Winston, I didn't get to go see her every day, but like I said, I called her. Um, you know, and every day I would ask for a report, and every day they would give me a little bit of hope. Um, and then on April 4th, they had been calling me, and I wasn't awake. And I got, you know, I woke up to them calling me again, telling me that she wasn't going to be here much longer, and I needed to get to the hospital as soon as I could. So I called my aunt and my uncle and told them to, you know, meet me at our old house or at our house. And we would just drop up there together. 
And when we got there, um, I wasn't ready to say goodbye to her. Um, I stepped out of the room when they took the tubes and stuff out of her. And I held her hand. And she took her last breath. 